स्मार्ट फार्म प्रॉस्परस फार्म इनिशिएटिव माय इंटरेस्ट बेसिकली कम फ्रॉम पॉलिसी एंड टू सम एक्सटेंड प्रैक्टिस इन दिस इशू गाइस बीन कंसर्न लाइक मेनी ऑफ यू विद द स्टेट ऑफ स्मार्ट वर्ल्ड इन दिस कंट्री हु आर द वास्ट मेजॉरिटी बट जनरली आई डू सी फ्रॉम सम दिस लाइफ नॉट केयर फॉर बोथ इट्स अ पॉलिसी एज वेल एज द पॉलिसी डिस्कोर्स व्हिच गोस ऑन So I'll take about 50 to 80 minutes to take you through the uh, uh, preliminary findings of case studies of this SFP. The uh, SFPF uh, we have been able to uh, uh, do in the last uh, couple of months, uh, despite all the other pressures. And I'll be happy to sort of get your feedback on this. Now I just want to sort of state once again that we have this kind of numbers of farmers now in this country. And 85% of them are marginal or small. I don't need to define these two. Basically, saying less than two hectares. And I want to say this because when Kishan proposed this initiative, he was very sort of strict on saying it should not be more than one hectare. And I was saying that it is very difficult to find that many 1,000 farmers of the kind which we are looking for from that particular. So sort of I made it flexible going up to two hectares. I know that is right or wrong thing to do, but that's what. Uh, I have sort of, sort of, and he allowed me to do that. And they are operating over 44 percent of area. And you look at the diversity in terms of, we keep talking about the average size of one hectare, but it is as much as four hectares in Punjab. These are operated holdings. And uh, uh, as low as 0.22 hectares in uh, Kerala and 0.77 hectares in West Bengal. So a large diversity in the kind of profile of farmers, even within the small and farm, farmer side. And uh, these farmers, uh, are also marginalized to the extent that because of this tenancy and reverse tenancy in Punjab, for example, 35 percent of the farmers now operate almost 70 percent of land, and in Haryana, 15 percent farmers operate 55 percent of land. So, a large concentration of land in the hands of your and your farmers, and this initiative is one way of sort of looking at that the logic or lack of logic in this kind of uh, agriculture development or practice which is going on. and. Uh, I would also like to inform you that if you are talking about some way of bringing farmers together in terms of collectivity, then the picture is very dismal in terms of only 2% farmers being member of any farmer association and only about 5% being member of any self-help group and so far progressive state like Punjab, the picture is even worse in terms of numbers of 0.3% and 1.5% respectively. Uh, more importantly, the point uh, I think one needs to talk about for the small the situation in this country is that of risk production and market risk. It really made farmers who have a livelihood out of a small piece of land uh, each farmer has. Then you need to look at ways of reducing farmers production risk as well as market risk. Because crop insurance really doesn't work in this country. It's only covering 4% of the farming community. And large, large majority of them are not aware of this uh, uh, policy and its practice. And there has been 40% uh, insurance started in only one state in Gujarat and that to in one crop and that to one district. So that is the state of affairs in terms of how crop insurance works are done work in this country. And major problem the listing for everyone is aware of we, we don't need to read talk so much about you start inputs, go through credit, irrigation, extension, markets, everything is like not in favor of small holders. In fact I, I use the term that markets mistreat small holders in India, whether in terms of purchase of inputs or sale of output. So we need to look at how do we reduce the extent of maltreatment or mistreatment of farmers in this country, small farmers in this country. Added to that is the high health expenses because increasingly health sector, like education sector is being prioritized and the cost of health care is going up. And this is compounded with the lack of alternative sources of income. In fact, a lot of people argue that any small farmer who is able to live off well in this country is doing that because there is somebody in the family who is earning non-farm income. Otherwise, it's not possible to really live off a small farm comfortably. Uh, so, therefore, keeping this in mind, let's look at what prevails in terms of policy uh, perceptions and arguments and how we sort of uh, place this initiative of looking at uh, examples of small and personal farmers to, to look at some of those aspects of policy. For example, there have been recent micro scanning database studies in India last year only by Ramesh Chand and uh, people from IGIDR pointing out that the value of output per unit of land area is still higher on small farmers farm compared to medium and large farmers. And this is debate as high productivity debate which goes back to 1970s and so on. 
So there is no doubt that small farms, farmers are efficient producers of whatever they produce compared to their counterparts. Uh, but still, if you talk about the viability of small holders, there is an issue. People mix up the viability of a farm with that of the farmer. I think these are two different things. You can't blame a small farm for the problem a small holder may face in terms of a family in livelihoods and so on. So I would like to differentiate the two and look at the farm and then relate it to what it can do a small farmer's family or not. And it is also stated by these above studies that small farm income from this so-called efficient small farm in general at the macro level is not adequate to meet all the farmer's livelihood needs. And therefore they recommend diversification and non-farm uh, sector uh, development and so on, promotion of it. And that's a recent study where Professor Tushar was also there at Randabad, uh, Professor A.K. Singh from UP, from Gates. He presented a study where he uh, did a comparative assessment of the small and uh, uh, other categories of farmers in terms of their income sources and viability and so on. He also pointed out that only 50% of the income of farmers today in this country, at least in UP, comes from farming. The rest comes from other sources. But then he also ended up saying that small farmers are not viable because they don't produce as much. But then when we looked at it, he was comparing different cropping patterns. Small farmers are doing something else and large and medium farmers are doing something else. So you really can't compare apples and oranges and come to the conclusion saying small farmers are not efficient. So uh, that was also another reason for looking at this a uh, little more seriously. And as you all know that if you are looking at wheat paddy, we will be talking about Bihar in the forum room. Uh, everybody knows the case of Punjab, Haryana and other parts of uh, uh, South India as well to some extent. We are just talking about wheat paddy rotation and talking about any farmer and more so small farmer eking out a livelihood of it. I think that is a, a foregone conclusion that that's not possible. If I just give you the back of the annual calculation in Punjab, if you just want to impute and include the, uh, the actual prevalent land lease which a farmer has to pay to, to lease in, then it hardly, the, the growing of wheat and paddy on whatever acre of land hardly leaves anything for the farmer per acre in terms of net profits. It may not be more than 3 to 5 thousand uh, because the prevailing lease rate is between 40 to 45 thousand rupees per acre for the related to well this indicated land. So therefore, I am not even going to talk too much about it. Uh, but then there are varied experience. I am aware and I will share with you that it is not just one picture. There are different types of pictures which are marked when you talk about small farmer being prosperous or uh, not so prosperous. So I basically share with you three uh, uh, case studies. Before that, let me just make this argument for policy again. But generally, in policy circle, there is a negative view about small holders. People want them to get out of farming. In fact, when you state farmer commission, couple of years stated this in a report saying small farmers cannot be doing viable farming, they should be asked to do something else. And there have been large scale so demands in the recent past to remove land ceilings, saying these are outdated laws and we have moved on and so on. We need to have scale, we need to have more corporate kind of farming because we need to have mechanization because so called labor shortage and so on. So uh, some state assemblies have gone to the extent of even proposing to pass an amendment in the land ceiling that will happen, happen uh, as of now. And in policy, I can give you sort of very many details that there is not a single policy in this country other than micro education guidelines which provide any specific preference to small holders. That's the only, that they say that 25% of the micro educated area should belong to small and marginal. That's only a guideline, not, not mandatory. And further, if you go to the tenants, morning also we are discussing this, there is no policy. We keep talking about how much land is tenant cultivated in this country, somebody says 50, somebody says 25, a lot of informal tenancy goes on. But there is no policy on how do you help tenant farmers do better in terms of their farming activity. Andhra tried to make an act last year, and I was told that that was one of the reasons for the Andhra crop holiday a uh, couple of years back other than Rega, these are the two sort of political economy explanations of why farmers declare holiday on crop holiday on 90,000 hectares of land and not going any party there, uh, though the uh, sort of publicly stated reason was lower MSP. And uh, generally, I, as I said, there has been market neglect for mistreatment of small holders that they get their inputs at higher cost because generally they need to buy it on credit, lower quality, not getting at the right time, and when they go to sell, they again uh, end up underselling because they have this interlocking of markets which they have to deal with. 
because they are borrowed or they have some other obligation to the seller. So on the output and the input side, the market doesn't really favor smart farmers. There are studies, in fact, from Gujarat as well, that the wheat farmer in Gujarat ended up, the smaller farmer ended up receiving lower prices per quintal compared to other categories of farmers, despite the fact that they have higher net yields per acre or per acre of land. So that, that's a vehicle study. The last point I would like to make about this is that I still believe uh, a lot of this exposure of different kind that people who talk about crisis in agriculture, I think are only talking of a particular sort of uh, uh, sign of this. It's not really about crisis of the sector per se. I have a simple question. If you say that there is a crisis in agriculture, which is part of the larger agribusiness chain, then why only farmers are committing suicide? That basically reflects that there is still money to be made in agriculture. It's a different matter that farmer is not able to make it. I am provoking why no, but I want to say this, that if there was a crisis in agriculture and the agriculture production is the basis of it, then other people dealing in the same chain of various forty commodities or so on, should have been also into crisis, but all of them are making money and you won't believe that every month I get towards the inquiries from former executive or management that you saying you want to enter every business. Somebody wants to lease and lease in land and do farming, somebody wants to set up a processing unit, somebody wants to hire out machines to farmers and so on. So it's a big opportunity for people who have money to make money. So we need to look at why, why is that farmer not able to make money as Professor Tushar was talking about the moving up the value chain. So is it only about production or is it something related to other aspects of the chain that is about valuation, processing, marketing and sort of capturing surplus in higher on different stages of the value chain beyond farm production. And I personally believe that if somebody wants to make money today, you can make the least amount of money in production. More of the money lies in higher stages of the value chain, more I would say in distribution and marketing, not necessarily in production alone. So we need to see how we look like it. Now let me talk about the case study. I know I'm doing on the time. How many minutes left? Um, okay. <laughs> so we uh, uh, ended up interviewing 52 farmers across three states of Punjab, Gujarat, and Maharashtra, but only 35 were relevant. Now this is this also speaks of how we look at smallholders. In fact, I started with the lists of these small farmers who were also supposed to be prosperous from some NGOs and come some corporates working with farmers. And you won't believe when I walked on those lists and started working with farmers, 90% of them were, didn't, uh, didn't fit into our categories of asset and peer. So uh, we have this list from Punjab, uh, from one NGO, six from a corporate, and across three, four districts, and so on. And only one case fit our sort of criteria in terms of uh, being smart as well as prosperous. And then I went to this small pocket in called Malir Kotla, which is a vegetable point of uh, central Punjab where we ended up uh, talking to, where we interviewed four farmers, four in, uh, farmers who were really as uh, such peer. Average land holding of four acres, average age of the farmer being 42, average schooling being just four years, and average crops being grown up by each farmer was five. In Gujarat again, we had a list which was much bigger, but we ended up having only four which fit into this category. Average land 2.9 acres, average age six, 46 years, average schooling nine uh, standard and as it talks almost four. In Maharashtra, that was actually a delight to be there. We had a large number of farmers who were from this SRPF category. So we interviewed 26 farmers. Average area 3.6 acres, average in 41 years, average schooling that standard average crops in four. But big contrast from what I saw in Punjab and what we saw in Gujarat and then what we saw in Maharashtra. So I'll just uh, give you quick details of that. So basically, it is about documenting that story, providing evidence of success. That was when you started with identifying factors in prosperity or success, whether person or institution or policy or social or whatever, and understanding the role of policy and business environment in promoting this, this kind of prosperity, and how farmers overcome some of the hindrances they face, and how can we infer on the replicability of this kind of uh, farmers. Now, this is the profile of SFPFs in Maharashtra. Leasing was not a big deal there. Not many people were leasing. People were doing their own uh, uh, own land cultivation. And lease rate was again not very high, varying from 10 to 20,000 rupees per acre. They were growing 4 to 7 crops. Only 3 farmers doing only sugarcane. And one had moved to sugarcane only recently. Earlier he was doing vegetables and other crops. 
Onion will prefer by most of them because it is lower labor, lower cost as well as lower labor involving. And you can take multiple crops. Because Maharashtra people take three crops of onion. Only six people were into commercial dairy production, milk production. There were not many dairy farmers in that area. Some had goats also. That, that, that was like, many people don't expect farmers to have this kind of small ruminants, but we also found farmers having uh, goats. Uh, park irrigated and a park very fed land. Tubal with lift irrigation most of the time from the uh, neighboring river or a, a deep tubal for the sources of irrigation. And there was some limited water market prevalent there. These are the pictures. The farmer having a motor electric connection on the bank of the uh, river. There is a truck which is picking up labor for harvesting of crops. At the uh, left, right, bottom, left side, or bottom, you see the, the sticks which are used to grow tomatoes. It's a very, very sophisticated operation. And on the uh, right hand side, you have a harvest and a storage structure for harvested onions to be kept before sale. So it's a very, very different uh, sort of domain which prevails in terms of what kind of agriculture and how it is done by farmers in those regions. Look at the crop diversity, sweet corn, tomato, onion, potato, chili, leafy, green vegetable like methi, dhania, sugar cane, not very big, giving only natural terms of 3500 rupees per acre. But easy to do as sugar mills, whether corporate or private, take over your farm at the time of harvesting. Then they have the own cars, own labor, own labor contractors and what not and they make sure that the harvest and sent to the mill as per schedule, so farmer can just rest. Net return per acre, sweet corn, 35,000 tomato, 130,000 rupees per acre, up, going up to 4 lakhs. Onion, 67,000, greens, 20,000, wheat root, 32,000. And you look at ginger here, we were told that from ginger you can get a gross income of as much as 16 lakhs per acre. You get 40 tons and it's been sold at 40 rupees a kg to 16 lakhs from one acre. And that crop can be kept on the farm for 20 months to wait for better prices. You don't need to really harvest it. So that was the extreme sort of kind of cropping of thing you could come across. So you have this crop very high net income. You have garlic, you have beans, you have flowers, turmeric and so on. And net income per acre per farmer, which we came to 1.38 lakhs. And if ginger or tomato with high price and oxygen were grown, it could even be beyond 2 lakhs per acre. So that was the kind of eye-opening figure we found there. Now you look at here, there is a cat, uh, cauliflower being grown there. This is the ginger with drip irrigation. This is potato with drip irrigation. And this is sugar cane harvesting going on uh, in the field by the sugar mill. So it is a very different kind of agri business with prevails there. Hindu Mahathas by caste, the, the community part of it. Many of them work earlier or are present into businesses like Hundekari. This is a local aggregator of produce who takes from small holders, has a transport sort of arrangement and sells on their behalf and gets a commission. You have goods transport also being done by some people, people transport being done by some farmers as side activity, people being employees in Washi market near Bombay and also in local APMCs, people being bus conductors and sports food shop owners and Hamaliwalas doing Monday labor arrangement and so on. So those kind of things were also being done by the small farmers. But Maharashtra was also surprised that this is the only state perhaps in the country where the farmer still has to pay the commission for selling its produce. The commission is not charged from the buyer. The seller has to pay the commission. That, that was quite a, a depressor. And you see this picture on the left side, the ladies, they had a little, uh, think of this, uh, patta at the back of their house and they were sort of harvesting it, grading it, packing it, sending it to, sending it to the mandi every day from their own house. That was really sort of, uh, and you have small tractors, not many tractors, but people have small tractors, otherwise lot of renting in of machines was the practice there, not owning tractors. Generally they do not grow wheat and paddy, despite water being there. Some of them are growing jowar and badri, more for own consumption. Potato seed, you will see some pictures also coming all the way from Jalandhar and being sort of retailed in the APMC like mostly fruits and vegetables retailed for domestic consumption. Uh, they have not availed of any major subsidy from any program other than micro irrigation and some onion storage structure under National Horticulture Mission. These are the only two things which came across as government support for helping these farmers move into sort of better marketing. They were either selling to Hundekari or in local APMC or district level APMC or micro market like Pune and Mumbai. 
So we are really sort of reaching the relevant markets whenever needed. We didn't come across any case of among all the 26 partners who are into any kind of contract farming ever with any company or any agency or any retail chain sales, which is now become the contract farming arrangements. Uh, so we saw some, some uh, collection centers of macro fashion carry in that area. All of them were members of primary agriculture cooperative societies at the village level. They had the some credit cards and some had also availed loans, advances from the sugar cooperatives in the local area. But we were also told that in that region predominantly these are small farmers and 50% of the population of farmers there could be described as SFPF. This is the picture. This is potato seeds being sold in the APMC market. So it's a seed but it's not notified as that. So it sells as a table variety but it's more for seed purpose. It's all imported from Punjab. Then you have this Hundekar is board here. Oh, and then you have Metro Fruit and Vegetable Collection Center. So these are subjects to give an idea of what prevails there in terms of agribusiness. Uh, many people were coming back to farming after city jobs and occupations as farming more remunerative. And these included drivers, mechanics, hamadiwalas, commerce graduate executive working with insurance companies and so on. They were resuming uh, uh, family farming activity after some break or wanted to do it better. Now look at Punjab. It's a just one, one, one pocket, not, not the rest of the story is hopeless. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I just I'll trust you to this. Uh, only one pocket and it's a, we are Muslim farmers who, who stayed back in India because that town was supposed to have played a role in protecting the children of one of the Sikh gurus. So they were not displaced. So they continue there. There's a much Muslim dominated town. And there are many Muslim farmers there, they are traditionally into vegetable cultivation and they are really SFPFs and they do a lot of intercropping and mixed cropping. They grow diverse crops on their own as well as leased land which are leased at the rate of 40,000 rupees per acre and so. And they do very intensive farming, most of them sell locally, some also do rural retailing of their produce by going on carts and cycles to sell in the neighboring bigger villages and so on. But there is a community culture of vegetable production. Even trade is controlled by this community. It is called the Kamo caste. Uh, these are the pictures of the farm, some floriculture by farm, a small domestic connection motor being used to do irrigation because they don't get the connection which are very, very costly in terms of the price you have to pay. It may cost uh, 200,000 rupees to get a connection in Punjab today, uh, uh, other than the real cost you have to pay. So some, some uh, pictures of that. Now, Gujarat. We, we covered four farmers from Saurashtra region, main crops listed here which are the predominant crops of Saurashtra anyway, irrigation with electric pump sets, sales at farm or directly to mill in the case of cotton or at APMC. Very different uh, picture compared to others. Net income of the order of 67,000 rupees to 109,000 rupees if you were organic. People were selling organic wheat at 33 rupees a kg. Similarly other organic products were being sold and two of the four farmers are actually organic. Dairy was an important activity there. Uh, two out of four had very commercial dairy farms. One of them was a member of a producer company, which is a big company which covers six districts and 6,000 farmers and is only making uh, tens of lakhs of rupees at profit and has equity of more than a crore and so on. Uh, had drip irrigation and biogas with government subsidy. Uh, you can look at the price scenario of high, very high price produce uh, uh, going from 50 rupees to 150 rupees or so on and ghee being sold at 600 rupees a kg and milk at 30 rupees a litre. Other income only one had this producer company sort of franchise Apna Kisan Ma, which is basically trading of modern agri input to the uh, member farmers and others and one more had two sons in Fahari Chamnagar. That is the story about Gujarat. Now what are the factors in prosperity? Irrigation, no, no escape from that. High value crops, not the run of the mill wheat and selling kind of crops. Market sense or market orientation. I'll show you some quotes of some farmers. Intercrop, cropping or mixed cropping. For example, Maharashtra we saw sugar cane fields in which there was male already standing and also cauliflower. And all three had different harvesting schedules. One will not disturb the other. So that kind of thing. Uh, family labor, availability of market, diversified cropping pattern. Cost control with renting in of machines, not owning them. This is happening also on some parts of Punjab, but not very widespread. Portable course, Pani has to agriculture there. 
यानी आलू एक रुपया डालो बहु मिलता है स्टैंडर्ड काइंड ऑफ एक्सपेक्टेशन सीक्रेट प्रोसेस प्लानिंग प्लांटिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू सीजन एंड मार्केट एंड वर्किंग हार्ड सो फोर एकर नेट इनकम पर ईयर पर हायर एंड सैलरी ऑफ अ डॉक्टर वर्किंग इन महाराष्ट्र स्टेट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड एंड गेटिंग हंड्रेड एंड रुपीज पर है and another one who was working as a driver and getting only 97 so 3 to 4 acres can give you uh, livelihood which better than a uh, uh, sort of medium income government or private employee learning role of knowledge planning and market orientation people have to farmers have to understand markets and do agriculture accordingly not otherwise not plant and then think where to sell access to irrigation no factory power needed most are paying for it And there are some limited balance of water markets, whether in Punjab or Maharashtra, or I'm sure in Gujarat as well. High market price fluctuation is still an issue here. Like tomato, they said you can make one lakh or four lakh depending on the price. Uh, no, no risk coverage, and the whole business of agri business or agriculture is being driven by the prevalence of APMCs, agriculture produce market. They are still the up bottom. What happened to agriculture doesn't happen despite all the other things we talk about modern markets and so on. No market respect for farmers. For example, even in areas like Nashik or Pune, farmers still have to load their fresh, leafy, green vegetable produce on the roadside, on an on an unpaved ground, and so on, and wait for the whole operation to take place in the uh, late evening or uh, middle of night, and so on. So that is the picture in terms of marginal products of modern channels like retailers, processors, wholesale cash and there are not many farmers are dealing with some were approached but they refused to meet because they didn't like the conditions, terms and conditions we put in terms of only a grade, only market price, base price, no extension and so on. Cooperative producer company or other institutions are missing, farmers are fending for themselves most of the time. Even Mahasthra, we thought there were many more but there are not many institutions other than PACs and sugar cooperatives, sugar mills or whatever. MSP and government procurement of food waste prevents, I am willing to say this, diversification and market orientation. And Ahmad Nikar attempts to perpetuate this. Parallel negotiations are going on and increasing the beat MSP. It will be done in a couple of days. Uh, at the same time, some states are asking for a diversification package and so on. There is a desire to do well and there is a culture of agribusiness in some of these pockets we came across. That's what has been driving farmers and their prosperity. And we have not adequately appreciated the role of women as farm workers, whether on the farm or in the household or up behind the sort of the manager of the farm. There are this lot of women who are not being just talked about, even by farmers themselves. Any that needs to be attended, I will stop here. Thank you very much.